pleasant evening. Nice bright blue skies, it's been miserable and grotty all day. Here with a quick gaming review of Best Left Buried, independent game from Soul Muppet Publications. I keep on getting that wrong. Soul Muppet Publishing, awfully sorry. So www.soulmuppet.co.uk. This is, as you can see, a small format game. Uh, it's a little bit wider than A5, but it's a small format with your indie, rest of your indie games. 60 pages, soft cover, black and white. Uh, you have twin column text with a nice kind of gothic font for the column headers. And then scattered about five or six places throughout the book, you've got these full page black with white art and white text splash pages. This uh, is about 15 quid from their website. I think I got this one through Melsonian. It's before they started selling them themselves. There's a PDF available on drive through as well. So if you want to check out the PDF, you've got that option there as well. Uh, this is the Crypt Digger's Guide to Survival. It is the basic book. It has got enough to play and get started. You can think of it as like a, a basic player's guide. There is also a deluxe version and a separate doomsayer's guide for GMs and people that want all in the one load. Um, this is a fantasy horror game. This is an OSR game, old school uh, renaissance. It's not a retro clone, so it doesn't use standard bx stats so you've got three stats in the game brawn wits and will it's a d6 only system i've done a dyson bolts video should be on the channel somewhere else we can have a look at me just kind of going through very quickly as to how the dice work it's very simple straightforward it's got a few inspired pieces to it um it is a classless system so you're not picking like what you'd normally say uh, there are a series of archetypes which kind of speed things up but they kind of give you where you start from, then as you advance, you kind of choose the advancements that you want. Uh, a few nice shout outs for the mechanics and the way that the game works. Monsters, there's no monsters in this book. So there's no stat blocks of monsters. Um, make your own monsters, keep the players guessing. No Crypt Digger Apprentice knows every monster in the crypt. Such a thing would be impossible. So effectively, you are kind of making up stats of the monsters, which I think was very deliberate in the design of this game that they didn't want people to say oh well it's a skeleton it's going to have a 15 ac it's going to take half damage from piercing weapons or whatever whereas if you describe the mouldering shambling wreckage of a corpse in the crypt that you're in uh, that way round, they might think it's a something might think it's a, but they're not going to know the numbers before they start which i think is a wonderful thing um second bit of it um as well as i said the, the three stats so there's a splash of the character sheets fairly simple and straightforward there's a PDF available from the website, which is form fillable, which is always a nice addition uh, for people that like to keep things electronic in that way around. Um, as well as your three stats, brawn, wits and will, you have vigor, which is your kind of hit points and your stamina and your resilience. There's another stat called grip, which is a resource stat. It starts off based on your willpower plus five, I think. And whereas vigor, oh sorry, grip is a combination of your mana and your sanity and your um, attention to the, the game and basically your stability and whereas your vigor can restore back to its maximum level over time like a good night's rest can get some of your, uh, you know, a lot of your vigor back your grip doesn't increase quite so easily um, you might find you'll get a point or two from when you get out and go to town and go to your local church or, or do whatever you do you might get a point back but that's not a huge amount uh, and if your grip ever falls to zero you are a gibbering wreck you are running off to join the fairies you are catatonic you are out of the game there is a mechanism where you uh, can take um i don't recall what it calls uh, consequences which will reset your grip to i think 10 points uh, these are like I don't want to use the phrase insanities because there's been an awful lot of things like that, but they are like afflictions and ongoing injuries and growing flaws and so on. And that's things like uh, debilitating dread, a bitter grudge, uh, despair of worthlessness, lost and without hope. These are quite bleak character, mental and physical afflictions that would then go through for it so effectively you've got the point and it is the player's choice 
to say, no, I think I've reached a point where I'm going to become, like, I'll, I'll refuse to bathe. Your grip goes back up to 10, you can keep on going, but you've got the character four that you've taken with you. Um, and given that grip is used to power some of the, uh, like, arcane and, like, supernatural powers that advancements can give you, and some, even the, the more basic ones, need grips points to spend uh, to, to get through them, it's quite a, a, a big mechanic because it's a non-renewable resource, which in some games it just, it's the balance point, and that's where it comes from. Um... Again, on their website, there's a link to uh, like a random character generator, um, which is quite interesting. You know, click, click it a few times, you, you can download a printable um, image of that one there, and it's mobile friendly as well, which is quite useful. Um, so it means that you can come up with a party of initial crypt diggers. You know, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience to paraphrase the video. It says specifically in the book that the characters that you play or your equip diggers are capable individuals. So they start off with a reasonable amount of equipment. This isn't like Torchbearer or Dungeon Crawl Classics, where you know if you if you roll lucky and you get a woodcutter, you've got an axe, and that's about the best that you can hope for. You start out with a little bit of money, some weapons, some basic armor, that sort of thing. Um I've got to be honest, on this game, I bought it for the shelf. I was going through a spell where I was buying small format games. I like small format games, I always have done. So I picked up Troika and Hyper Tellurians, and I got this as well because I'd seen it. I follow the guy that does it on Twitter, and I thought, yeah, sure. I had a quick flick through it, put it back on the shelf, nice and simple. Um, but I went back to it because partially for the Dyson Bolt side of things, I thought, didn't actually get when I was reading it first time I didn't get around to the dice system and I had a look at the dice system and I thought oh hang, hang on that's quite interesting and then I kind of dug into it a bit more and it doesn't take much digging because there's not much of it and I thought where would I use this you know I've got I've got Dungeon World which is my kind of go-to fantasy game I've got Genesis I've got um, Cypher System all of which have, have got elements that I need and I realised this would make for ideal con games. There's zine adventures which are written out there. This would be absolutely ideal to do as a one-shot at a convention. Um, obviously, there's a very different school of play because you're not necessarily going to be using the character characters again. So racking up those consequences, chewing through your grip points left, right and centre, not a problem at a convention, but that would be fun. And because it's D6s only, because it's very system light, and because it's very simple and straightforward, it is an ideal online game, which in times like we're in at the moment, I can go for it. Um, am I going to use it? I might give it a pop. I might give it a pop. I've got an intro. Is, is it, there's a the thing, is it a game for people who haven't played games beforehand? I think it might be. I'm 50 50. I'm kind of on, on, on the hedge about that one there. Um, a lot of people are kind of uh, are being exposed to the tabletop role playing hobby or the, the role playing games hobby. I can't exactly call it tabletop games these days. And they're kind of thinking, I think some people think that the rules are big and complicated and whatever, and this ain't that. It is even more simple than a BX retro cloned. It's because you've got just this super simple dice system. And it'll be easy to say, okay, get a group of your friends together on Discord or Zoom or whatever you've got. Google, Google have made their thing free now. Um, and say, have you got a six-sided dice? To ask people to who aren't gamers if they've got 20-sided dice or a set of polyhedrals is pushing it a little bit. But six-sided dice, you've got a Monopoly set, you've got... Uh, snakes and ladders for the kids. You've got anything. You could even do this if you had a Popomatic. I want Popomatics to, to make a comeback. Makers of the world do that. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've got anywhere where I can slot it in in the games that I'm running at the moment. But this, in the, the second or third reread, has gone from bought for the shelf to that list of possibilities. So yeah, check it out. As I say, I think it was about fifteen quid. 
so it is it's it, it's a nice book and if you get it and just lift a few bits from it it's absolutely wonderful for that sort of thing there um the dice system is well worth you know it, it's worth it for the dice system by itself um that's it for that one there uh let me know in the comments if there's any other systems that you want me to do a quick review of i'm trying to Few, do a few different things with the cameras and setups at the moment and trying to keep them a little bit shorter because that Starfinder review, a bit too long. Uh, roll well and I'll see you around.